Everybody come see the green show. Get the rope ball jerker loops and bow. Everybody come see the green show. Get the rope ball jerker loops and bow. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Blake and Sales Show with Mark. For over 10 years, dominating the podcast world. Now sit back, relax, and get ready to have some fun. Let's welcome your host, Blake, Sal, and Mark. I'm looking in the rearview mirror. Everything looks the same. There's nothing but broken street lights. I'm not I'm waiting on a distant feeling. I'm waiting for things to change. It's getting hard to run on empty. But maybe I'm not so far away. I ain't feeling like home. Hello and welcome to the Blake of South Show, episode number 498. Well, I feel good to say. I am one of your hosts, Blake. Let me bring on my co-host, Russell. The biggest film in podcasting. The man who I, I think I've been talking to more than even my wife in the last couple of weeks since I've been home. Sal, how you doing? Well, like you say, you have nothing better to do. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh! I would not even say that with you. There are things I will say that for, not you. So. Did, did you ever <laughs> get, get the chance to put the rim shot on the soundboard there? That's what she said. <laughs> How you doing, Bill? I'm good. I am wearing my brand new acclaimed jersey. Ooh. I'm actually wearing the... Um, let's see. Let's see the back. I'm actually wearing. Oh, I can't oh, turn the chair Bowen. all the way. Bowen, there you go. I see it. I see it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Bowen's I'm Owen? actually wearing my um, brand new um, stadium series shirt that I treated myself to. But nice. they actually became actually able to buy. Yeah, I love that. I love that logo without the circle. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> and me, I'm just wearing my Tommaso Tampa t shirt. Oh, who's talking? He's the big, the big, I'm sorry, I'm the man in the middle of the Mark Dad, how you doing? Hey, doing well. Uh, Glad to see everyone is all here. The gang's all here, and everyone's feeling uh, fit and fine and raring to go. And uh, Sal, remember the golden rule, don't run with scissors. I'm trying to scissor myself, and it's very hard. <laughs> uh, uh, that's that's what what she said. Said. No, 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 I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. We are admitted. We are admitted into the show. We haven't even got to the intro yet. Oh my god, it's gonna be one of those mornings. Actually, that, that's that's gonna be the tunnel of the show. I tried to scissor myself. Oh my god. <laughs> no, for no, those reasons, that 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 don't hurt yourself. Dog is beating out in the background. This is um simple plan, um in state champs with um Breathe the Kings where I belong. Now the question the question I'm hearing is how is this wrestling music? Hey, I got away with this one because I've been watching TNA wrestling the last few weeks. And that's Zaya Brookside theme music. I'll go with it. I'll take it and run. I'm not going to okay. lie. The funny sure. part about that song, funny part about that song, I actually didn't know that song existed until a few months ago. Because I was looking <laughs> for something for an AKO post. Listen to me. I was looking for something for an AKO post. I'm like, Damn. the title works. I play it. I'm like, oh, it's Simple Plan. I love Simple Plan. And I'm like, this is a perfect song for what I need it for. And then all of a sudden I'm watching, I'm actually in the hospital watching Impact because I had nothing better to do. I'm watching Impact. <laughs> You must have really been bored. <laughs> oh, seriously, the fact that been real, it's actually been really good since the rebrand. It's actually been really good since the rebrand. Okay. But um, anyway, so I'm watching it. So I'm watching it from my, on my laptop, just sitting there. And all of a sudden, I'm not only half paying attention to real life. The, the nurse is in the room with me talking to me. I'm only half paying attention. And all of a sudden, I hear Zaya Brookside come out. I hear this song hit. I'm like, wait a minute. I know that song. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> it took me till the till the um till sacrifice. Well, yeah, that is simple plan. Like, holy shit, uh, awesome! All right, cool. So I got away with that one this week. So, so <laughs> is the product better with or without Scott Demore? I couldn't tell you yet. So they just got through the taping that he was involved in. Okay, you know next week. Wow, okay, I cannot tell you. I don't know. Okay. I don't. I could not answer that question yet. 
Okay. They just had their their last two. Um, they do have POEs every. They have monthly POEs, and they just had two of them, and the shows have been really good. The shows have been really, really good. But again, mm-hmm. you can't ask me after this series of tapings. Like I don't can't answer. Okay. That All right. We'll, so we'll save that, it for next, another. Maybe next, next show I can answer that question better. Okay. Really okay. We'll save it for next show. Um. Anyway. Uh, before we get into things, let me actually do some quick plugs. Um, go pick up any book. I know I am available right now at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and RNT Publishing. Available in English and in Spanish. And I believe returning next week, obviously taking a break with everything going on, the Dean the Mandy Show available on all podcasting platforms. I believe they told me they're going to be coming back next week. So there you go. Coral. So real fast before we get into things, I do want to do check in people listening. Um, yeah, I'm back. Hi guys. Been 15, as of this recording, 15 days post op. I'm not gonna lie, it has not been easy. I'm not gonna bullshit people, it hasn't been easy, <laughs> but I'm here. I'm, I'm happy to be back behind this microphone. I'm not gonna bullshit people. I'm happy to be back here doing this. I missed you guys. I missed doing this. Oh, I know last week we had our archive show up because I did. I obviously needed the week off last week, mm-hmm, and um, mm-hmm. dad ran the ship the week before. Um, <laughs> And I realized we haven't been together in four weeks. Like, one of those things because of the stadium series and archive shows and all kinds of stuff. Like, we haven't yeah. been together in four weeks. I'm like, holy shit. It's been a while since we've done this. But well, I'm doing okay. I'm doing well, all right, all things considered. Believe it or not, you have a lot of well wishers that are in your corner. Yes, a lot. That, a lot that uh, you know, after I, I even after we did the show with Jen, more people came in. So you have a bunch of people in your corner helping you with this fight and uh you know what that works it does i will thank everybody out there thank you so much i mean a lot of messages i'm getting cards in the mail which is weird i don't know i got a card in the mail like, what family with the jersey is sending me cards i'm like what's happening like what's going on around here hey, well if, okay. if, if it comes with money maybe you better that. thank tony hey, d'angelo a couple of them did. A couple of them actually did come with money. Um, <laughs> then thank Tony D'Angelo, the Don. <laughs> Are you the number one contender? The number one contender for the NXT Championship. <laughs> there you go. That's a thing. That is a thing that's happening. <laughs> Yo, that's a thing. Okay. Um, the other thing I did announce on my um in, on my Facebook and everything the other day, as of this recording, where I mean it's going on Friday, but I put this up on Tuesday night. Um, for those who are recording with people clicks minute in the month of March. I'm not recording until April. I need this time off. I think I explained it to, to um to uh, Mandy. This show is not stressful. This show is easy. We throw some shit on a run sheet and we bullshit for an hour and a half. This is easy. <laughs> Simple. Like, but during the during Flux Minute, it takes a lot of work. And I don't have the mental capacity to do that work right now. So I'm taking a break from that show until about April. It's last, probably after Mania. And I'll get so- do that <laughs> so what you're what you're saying is this show is fun it is well i, I look, <laughs> look at it, don't get me wrong but that takes work because i have to do a whole bunch of work behind the scenes that nobody really knows about this show is easy for me i i love doing wants to do that well the fact <laughs> is it, I, mean, I, I got this down to a fucking science like i got all the, everything down to a science on this end so, so like it's easy yeah. for me. so we, we we put the f in funkin fun funkin fun yeah there you go funkin fun well, I'm so sad. I'll ask you a quick question because I, I, I forgot to ask you on the air. How's Harry Potter? Because that was your reason you were in here a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, it was really good. Um, I know you're not Harry I'm going to be honest. Well. Yeah, I know you're going to be yeah. honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, so with the intermission, it was just about four hours. Wow. And I'm telling you right now, wow. it, it flew. It you I, I was like, wait, what? It's already you know five o'clock or whatever. Um, it was a really good show. Visually beautiful the acting was amazing the the sets were amazing it was just it was a really good time i i i'm glad that we were able to have that experience that's great to hear that's great to hear. i know it used to be a two-day event and now it's down to four hours so there you go <laughs> so the, the main characters in the story were they just like in the film kind of like wieners yeah, it's it's them in, you know grown up in the future or whatever and it really revolves around harry potter's son Oh, I oh. actually didn't know that. I didn't know that. I'm dead serious. I, there's not something I was going to see. So I'm like, this is yeah. what I'm not even going to see it. Oh, so, good. I have no problem with spoilers. So I'm not going to see it. Yeah. So maybe because of this, would there be a possibility to continue the series on film? Uh, actually, I did look at it. Um, none of the original actors want to do it. 
Uh, but that's only because you know the timeline of this story they're supposed to be you know much older and they're you know they're parents to to teenagers so they don't really look the part so that's another reason why they don't want to really do it so either they're going to wait a really long time or they're just going to recast if they decide to go that route okay that makes sense. I, I was actually, yeah. I was looking it up real fast. I was curious how long the original show was, but it didn't say. Does it actually say? If I know, coming out of the pandemic, it changed into the show you saw. Like, coming out of the pandemic. Yeah. But I really didn't realize well, that. I know. I remember the book was really long. Yeah, but I remember, it. remember the big deal, because I remember one of our friends saw it, and it was like a two-day event. They had to go like one night and then go the next night. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> and they actually had it like you can go in the afternoon, go to dinner, and then come back for the night show and do the second part. Like it was that kind of thing for a while. Wow. Before the pandemic. And the pandemic hit obviously and they changed things and they made it to the show you store. Yeah. Oh, and I think it sounds like a lot more fun to show you store because at least three and a half hours to four hours isn't that bad when you look at it from that perspective. Yeah. It was great. I, I enjoyed it. Just don't drink a lot of liquids. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? As one thing we've learned at AEW show, that doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We've learned that you just, AEW show, so like, hmm? you can just tinkle on the floor, no big deal. You know, there were some people at AEW that wouldn't surprise me if actually did that. And what it was shocking me. <laughs> Nothing would surprise me at this point. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, what's gonna happen at one of these days you're gonna someone's gonna get up and I'm what's gonna happen is gonna hang on. We'll pause until this person gets back from going to the bathroom. That's called an admission. <laughs> That's called an admission. Or, or in AEW, say the, the 10 minutes between Rampage and, and Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or the picture in picture for the next 90 seconds. <laughs> I, 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 I'll talk about the part of the just, just one more thing. All right. Um, quick announcement. Me, me, me and Tower both did this at the stadium series. And I, I honestly forgot to record us doing this. I forgot to record us announcing this at the stadium series. Because we were busy and had other things to do, and we were uh, occupied talking to people and drinking and being cold. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> back to that show. Go back to that. Well, so the funny part is, I'm editing that show. I'm editing that show, and I forget we never had an outro. <laughs> we never recorded an outro. <laughs> we, forget, we were so cold. We both forgot to record an outro. <laughs> <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> it's so funny. I was able to edit around it, but it was very, very funny. But it was not to it. <laughs> so cold that you guys didn't have an outro. We we just we were trying to get to the car, trying to get out them stuff. Okay. If you really want an outro, it would have been all style cursing and people trying not trying to do a bunch of the city. <laughs> well, there it out. is. That would have been the outro there. of the show with style cursing at people. There, there is your outro. Perfect <laughs> outro right there. All I'm saying is the zipper method is pretty effective when you're trying to get out of a congested area. That's all I'm gonna say. Let's see who Cell hated today. <laughs> <laughs> that stupid bitch. And the Stubaru or whatever the fuck that was that was trying to block me, and I got my way anyway. Oh my god! So did she cock block you? She car blocked me. Oh. There it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> anyway, anyway, two weeks, two weeks. On uh, the twenty eighth of March, we will be doing a live show, our five hundredth show. Uh, no, twenty seventh, twenty eighth. Looking at a calendar. 27th, sorry. 27th. I'll, I'll air on the train. Let me tell that again. On Wednesday, so I'm going to put the video up. I'm going to put the video up. People on the podcast side, you know, people on the podcast side will hear this, and on the, on the video side, won't. So, oops. Uh, <laughs> lost track of the conversation. Um, <laughs> I'm going to shit. I'm going to shit. <laughs> In two weeks, on March 27th, Live our 500th show, which is insane, which is absolutely crazy. We're doing a 500th show, um, so also celebrating our 11th anniversary, which is crazy. Um, we're yes. gonna, and I think let's put it at noon. I guess unless Sal has some issues with on his end, I don't mind okay. wide open. Let's put it at noon central time, 1 p.m. eastern time instead of 12 30 at the lunch at the lunch hour show for people that want to join <laughs> us. Maybe more people can join us live, that would be really cool. And if there's anyone that wants to bring us lunch, please feel free. I, I, I will take Uber Eats. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not against Uber Eats. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be. I would like. I would like some ribs. That would be nice. Ooh, here you go. So um, Wednesday, March 27th at 12 noon. I'll have all the links and all the information up there. And also, I'll throw us out there right now, and I'll make sure there's links everywhere. 
We'll take voicemails. We're all up for our, our favorite game on here. I would love to do the voicemail gaming. Like we always do. Ooh, 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 ooh. I would just you, mean, you, mean, you mean Google voicemail? Yeah, the Google Translator game. I, it's one of my oh, favorite. cool. I know it sounds cringing already, but I, I already it. have a headache. I already have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't really get into the, the, the programming. You already get a headache? Wow. All right. That's, so that's, a, that's a big enough that we'll do that in two weeks. All right. Um. So I, everyone knows I've been home pretty much. Um, what since the first? I've been home pretty much, yeah. just hanging out, not doing a whole lot because I can't do anything really. Is the first whole thing I've done that doesn't involve me sitting in my chair in like two weeks. Um, I can't do anything. Um, except for like minor workouts and like here and there. So I've been watching a lot of TV, and admittedly, as Sal joked about it a couple like a month ago, I've been watching a lot of wrestling. Um, mostly <laughs> I got bullshit too. I haven't been watching as much as I thought I would. Um, I actually watched a lot of like um, New Japan Cups going on, so like they have two matches with New Japan Cups. So I'll watch those two matches and get back to something else. Like it wasn't that big of a deal. You know what I mean? Nothing major, nothing crazy. But um, I do have some stuff I actually do want to talk about. So a couple months ago. Um, I, I, I joked with dad. I'm like, when I finally get a chance to see Mean Girls, the musical, mm-hmm. remember, remember that nobody was a musical until they started in theaters. Um, I, I, I'm going to have either a, a good review or it's going to be the worst movie of the year for me. There's no in between because I love this. Wait, can I, can I take a guess? Yes. Worst movie ever. No, I'm actually really. Here's the thing. I'm not a mean girlfriend. I, I don't I don't even like the original movie. I see the movie. I, I never liked the original movie. Not my movie, not my thing, not my thing, not my genre. Okay. Got it. But I'm I, but I loved the Broadway soundtrack. Absolutely fell in love with it. One of my favorite soundtracks of the year. Actually, really disappointed didn't win a Tony Award. Real disappointed. So when I went into this, knowing they cut some songs, obviously, going into this, I'm like, okay, I'm iffy, but you know what? I'm home. I got nothing better to do. About an hour, about an hour 45 minutes in the musical. What 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 that could be for me? I'm not gonna bullshit to you. I really enjoyed it. I wow. really enjoyed it because a lot of people online hated it. So, well, here's the thing: you have to go in realizing that you're gonna change some things. You're gonna change some things right. to be from the Broadway show. And the thing was, a lot of people on Broadway people were complaining that they slowed some of the songs down for the movie. They slowed things mm-hmm. down cadence wise because they had a mass of singers in this movie. You can't imagine. Mm-hmm. They can't use the the, the the musical musical stuff from the Broadway show. The singers are different here. But if you take it, you listen to the soundtrack. Yeah, you can hear the differences on the soundtrack. It's obvious. When you're into the mm-hmm. movie, you can never tell. You can never tell. It's smooth. It works so well. And I admit, I really enjoyed it. It was really really good. Um, the cool part is they brought it to 2023, 2024. It wasn't like okay. it's not like we're remaking the movie. They remade it, but they didn't remake it. They did kind of right. all technology is now. Like mm-hmm. all like selfie jokes and like we're recording live stuff on like TikTok. They made all those jokes in this movie. They made all okay. those jokes. They made it a modern movie, a modern retelling of Mean Girls, which I thought it was really well done. And I'm not gonna bullshit you. Some people were just having a blast. Some people were just having mm-hmm. fun. You could tell people were just having fun doing this movie. Like I can't pronounce her name right, but the one who plays Moana. The girl who plays the, the lady who plays the Moana, I can't think. I can never pronounce her name right. Give me a second. Yeah, but I can never pronounce it right. Mandy Mandy knows that. I can never pronounce it, but she plays one of the characters. She plays one of the um not mean girls or the other people in the movie. Mm-hmm. And, and one of my favorite songs is "I'd Rather Be Me." One of my favorite songs on the Broadway show. She sang this song, and you could tell she had a fucking blast doing mm-hmm. this performance. I'm like, okay, this makes me so happy. <laughs> I can see her having so much fun okay, doing so this movie. <laughs> would you say that? This particular movie basically stands by itself and you can't compare yeah, it to absolutely. the original? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can go into this not knowing anything about the Mean Girls and have a lot of fun. Okay. Have a lot of fun watching this movie. And I, I would say, well done. And we probably won't hear me talking about it near the end of the year because it wasn't it wasn't my favorite movie so far this year, but definitely not the worst. Like, I expected, okay. I expected worse. I'm not going to bullshit you. Okay. Um, the other thing me and Mandy wrapped up this past week was the um, Love and WWE, um, Bianca and Montez Hulu's Hulu show. Okay, I, I'm very confused by this show. I'm very oh. confused by their doing the show. Okay, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I love Montez Ford and Bianca. And Montez are great. They're great. I understood what they did the show for. 
It felt like to me that they were working on a show that was meant to go on E. And then E said no. Then the Hulu <laughs> picked it up. And then Hulu picked it up. And they didn't bother to fix editing it. Because if you watch it, it felt like I was watching Total Divas with new cast. With the new cast. Oh. With the editing and like the jumping in and out. They were throwing the commercials. There's no commercials if you pay for Hulu. There's no commercials. Like, uh, true. So we're going to throw uh, the commercial and then we're going to come back and explain what so I'm like, we're on Hulu. What are you doing? Okay. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, it made no sense. But well, other than that, I thought, it was cool. like, I thought it was cool. Like, if you go into it knowing what it is, it's pretty much just Total Divas with a new cast, over the top, horniness. But Bianca's fun and Montez is ridiculously insane. So like, I want to do with that mentality. It's a good show, but it's just one of those things like, dude, this is new Hulu, not E. Why are you treating it like it's E? Like it's well, not. <laughs> I I watched the first episode and their chemistry is just fantastic. Oh, I'm unbelievable. But you would think that in their house, which you know how Montez is kind of like prim proper and Oh, you know, my kid is not proper. My kid is not. You obviously did not watch the rest of the series. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Proper. I mean, when he comes out and he, he's nicely dressed and everything, and then you cut to <laughs> Bianca trying to find her outfit, and you go into the, her room slash closet, and everything is on the floor. Um, obviously, <laughs> like I said, obviously you didn't watch later in the series when Montez is literally walking around with like nothing on but tights. Well, they're not about like like short short tights. Like you did not see that. So, <laughs> We're in tights. Like, but you know what? Montez is building to get away with it. It's one of the things. Like if I if I look that good, I wouldn't do the same fucking thing. Like I wouldn't care. <laughs> if I look that damn good. <laughs> Indeed, maybe it's the tights that make the ambiance. The episode, there's one show because um, I because the thing is the story the story led up to last year's WrestleMania. Hold my name with last year's WrestleMania, where Bianca right. I believe defended against Oscar, and then the Prophet yeah. were in that weird like four way um showcase match that nobody got anything up. It ended up being one of the best matches of night one. <laughs> one of the best matches of night one, unexpectedly. <laughs> so the, the whole storyline was leading up to that. But like um, Mont- I think Montez was in the chamber at one point. So they're trying to make a new outfit for him. And then Montez trying on things, making fun of Bianca's creating clothes. Why do one of my favorite montages of the entire show? <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I will laugh at, and I noticed it more in the last episode than anything else. Because mm-hmm. you know they have like the testimonials where they're sitting on the couch and they have to talk to the cameras, all that kind of stuff? Correct. There was one montage in the last episode where if you're paying attention... Bianca's wearing three different outfits as they cut to the couch. Who the hell? <laughs> who the hell does she think she is? Diana Ross? But, 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 <laughs> to me, they recorded it three different times and they edited it badly because you can tell she's wearing three different and outfits. And, and, and that's why E passed it up. I, <laughs> I think that, 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 that the point of that episode. You can tell by the point of the episode they they did not care about E anymore. They just wanted to keep the format. You can tell by this part of the show they realize they're not going to be any okay. from Hulu. <laughs> now, now to the question that everyone has on their mind: What is the big secret that Bianca is supposed to reveal? What are you talking about what secret? There is no secret. There you go. See that that's that's the thing is that people are saying there's talking about? What are you talking about? There was nothing even teased about that in the entire was, Again, so, by someone who watched one episode. Okay. You're telling me something. There, there, anything. No, no, there is somewhere and I forget what website where basically that there was something that Bianca was gonna reveal, like she's preggers. No, that would I, I think probably the show aired a year ago the show was filmed a year ago. We all would have known. That's no, it's probably a year ago. You know, and I know it, but people are just like, well, they're not. No one not. nobody watching, nobody took their time to watch this show on Hulu. Would knew was going to worry about that because you obviously knew. If you're thinking, <laughs> like, well, not E, I would have understood it, but if you're watching it on Hulu, you're obviously a wrestling man taking your time out to watch this show. Like, you're obviously, right. like, even though what's funny part is, I'm on, I'm on my podcast, Disney Plus ads because they want to promote Hulu shows being on Disney Plus now. Right. And the, this show was part of the advertising for that merger. Right. So that, that was pretty interesting. Oh. I thought that was pretty cool that this show was part of the merger. Um, yeah. Last right. thing. And I know we're all watching it. So I had to put it on here because there's no, this show has no right to be as good as it is. Yeah. <laughs> if you want the only deal or no deal island. 
What the fuck? This show does not deserve to be so good. <laughs> so I mean, so I knew the show was starting on starting, and then the first episode I believe was the Monday, the day before my surgery, and I was I'm like I had my laptop in the hospital with me so I can watch stuff. Or if I can watch stuff, that's for any other reason. And edit their show, <laughs> edit their show while after they do their show a couple weeks ago. So I had my laptop and I'm like, I kind of not really watch because I'm getting sick and tired of watching the same thing on TV. This is the same show. There's really nothing on unless you're on TV. There's really nothing on. So I'm like, mm-hmm. hey, I have a laptop here. I'm going to put my laptop up. I'm going to watch the other old Jill Island. I knew it was on. I'm 15 minutes in and I text out, like, you have to watch this show. You have to watch this <laughs> he thing. did. He did. He totally did. <laughs> oh. I'm like, this is so good. There's no reason for this to be so good. So, so to set people off, right. what's going on here? So, um, Deal or No Deal is back. And it's on an island, on the Bankers Island. On steroids. On steroids, yeah. Oh, it's on, shit, it's on the yeah. Island. The Bankers on a boat. And he's giving a No, not a boat. A ship. Yeah. yeah. A yacht, sorry, a yacht. He's on a yacht, <laughs> and he's giving instructions on how to play various like um, events to pick up cases, and then there's elim- there's like eliminations, and there's um there's all and there's backstabbing. It's like if somebody compared it to like a combination to do an old on Survivor. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's there's trading. Yeah, there's 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 like there's like all this random stuff going on. And then you're playing a game with O'Neal. At the end, but the key part is, but you don't win until you if you get to the end. Exactly, right? The winning the winning goes to a big pot at the end. But if you don't beat the banker, then you go home. If you beat the banker, you send somebody else home. I'm like, right. this is the most strategic game I've ever seen in this show. <laughs> I know. I was concerned when they first made the announcement because I'm like, how the hell do you? make that work like it's just you know we all know the game of deal or no deal so it's like how would you change it to make it more interesting and then you said what you said and i'm like all right i i i gotta i gotta put time aside and watch this now and i it it was it was two episodes and i loved it i haven't watched anything yet but to to me it's like a combination of survivor and deal or no deal and and i'm waiting for jeff probes to come out and go (laughs) the tribe is spoken (laughs) <laughs> I'm gonna say Joel, the Joe Manganiello, he is fantastic. He is amazing. He's great. Oh my god, I didn't realize how good of a host. I knew all, yeah. all new when they made announcements. There was no way how my was going on. The dry sense of humor. The dry sense of humor when he delivers the one liners is just perfect. <laughs> yeah. okay. I, I, am I the only one who's seen this week's show? This week's episode with um, Claudia? No, okay, this week's show is so fucking good because you know how we always joke on other shows. Like, how do you not let like a line? How do you how do you have these secret alliances and not have right. them come out? <laughs> they turned that on its head on this episode, where you realized, <laughs> well, that didn't last very long. <laughs> it didn't last long at all. That lasted ten minutes. Not even ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the whole, the whole show that turned up went out. I'm like, oh my god! Just like on the first show, Boston Rob is already making uh, alliances, and it was within the first fifteen minutes. <laughs> yeah, it was an incredible show. If you're not watching the show, go out of your way. There are only three episodes in as of this recording. You have to watch this, especially if you enjoy the yes. Odeo. Has it been good. doing good with the ratings? Do you know? When I read it, it was pretty good. It's, I, well, the problem is it's on Monday night. What's hysterical for me is that it's on Monday night, and right. we're watching Raw, and they're promoting it. Mm-hmm. It's on the same <laughs> time as Raw. They're promoting it. <laughs> <laughs> I cracked the blinding on Monday this week. We're like, yep. go watch the Odeo. Odeo. Starting at 10, 10 p.m. 9 central. Oh, There's yep. still hour of Raw going on right now and they're promoting this show. From, from, <laughs> what, from what I've read and been told, the banker on this particular series is female. Really? I did not hear that. Actually. I Supposedly. No, I thought it was a dude. Well, no, maybe I there's know. two. Know. Nobody knows. Nobody maybe there's two. Because here's the it's thing. A big enough yacht. It's a big enough yacht. In, 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 the original, <laughs> in the original series, when it ended, it was a dude. Nobody knew the identity of the band. So, by the way, I will say something. So, okay, okay, I'm gonna say something. So, okay. again, being someone who has nothing better to do, uh, okay. I was watching a lot. Of, I watching a lot of Pluto TV. Well, Pluto TV extended their game show stations again. They extended all their game show networks and deal no deal the station again. Um, Pluto hey. TV, it's the station again. So it's a good background noise, but you just want to have something on in the background. Especially like yesterday, CJ had homework to do, so we had it on in the background. <laughs> He had never watched the show. He's watching the best bit of the show and we're watching it while he's doing homework. He's the best bit. Because it's so good. <laughs> it's so invested. Um, so anyway, I love it. 
we have this going on, and I'm like, there was one point, and I'm watching an episode where somebody actually won the million. Probably only happened twice in the original run of the show. Only happened twice. I believe so, yeah. Ever, ever, twice. And I watched one of them this week. I watched it for the first time this week. And it was definitely a guy as a banker. It was 100% a guy. Yeah, the, the, the original last. banker was a dude. And then right. when they yeah. revived it, it was a girl. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I could have so sworn they, they said... CNBC or the syndicated show? Which one was that? One of, which one was that? I think the um, syndicated show had the female banker. For okay, I believe, it. yeah. I could have sworn they referred to the banker as a he, though, in episode two or whatever. So I don't know. I'm Maybe not sure. Two. Who knows? There's two. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I'm not honest with you. I could not tell you. you. You know, they should have a side game where you have to guess the banker's identity and see if you're right. Maybe the banker is the ah. Uh. Maybe the banker <laughs> is Joe Magnell's ex, Sofia <laughs> Vergara. Maybe the banker is the yacht. I'm sorry. <laughs> that could be another title of the show, too. The banker is the yacht. <laughs> so no, I can't do it at all. That's the best part. The banker is the yacht. <laughs> you know, we could stick some big ass googly eyes on the front and, you know, give it a face. What is it? What is it a, part of, a part of cars? Like, what? Is it a car universe all of a sudden? <laughs> and the name of the yacht is the banker. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's not even that part. Match. That's the bad part. <laughs> right. The SS well, banker. We will yes. talk. We will talk more about that when we get there. So okay. We'll do in the future because I do want to talk about this show more as we go along. As you guys catch up on the episodes, because it's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, so I, I before we get into the wrestling, last night I'm we're getting ready to watch NXT, and um, my phone goes off. Sal texts me, and everyone going, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> <laughs> and I don't bring politics stuff on the show often. I really don't. I try not to. I try to avoid it. It's our escape from politic world. But this is one of those stories that I had to bring up on the show. <laughs> I had to bring up. So it came out, and apparently this has been like vetted a legitimate story. This is 100 percent legit. This is real. Okay. This is from okay. the New York Times. Like not, sat, not satire or anything. This is it's from the New York out. Times. This is straight from the New York Times. This is 100 percent legitimate, and it's been vetted by various people. Um. Robert Kennedy Jr., who is currently running for president on the independent ticket against our old against um the two old men. Um and by the way, I will do old jokes about Joe Biden any day of the week, even though I voted for him. I don't give a fuck. Um <laughs> so the rumor we're going around that he's looking for a vice president candidate to go on the independent ticket. Obviously, you have to have one by a certain date. Correct. Mm-hmm. And he's talking to apparently Aaron Rodgers or Disney the Body of Ventura. To be his running back, and here's the best. <laughs> oh, sorry, apparently, Aaron Rodgers has been like promote has been like going on the campaign trail during the offseason with Robert Kennedy Jr. to try to push him over the edge, to try to get people to vote for him. And apparently, they're really close. Really, they're really close friends. Um, <laughs> what? What? I, I did not see that one coming. I heard all this on the on the on the, on the, on the Mr. Mr. talking about this. I heard all this late last night. I'm like, what Mr. I'm gonna go to my fortress of solitude and basically kind of <laughs> humiliate myself and, and whine and moan because I'm not getting my way, Aaron Rodgers, bitch. Yeah. So okay. any thoughts on this one, guys? Because I do not see this one coming on any level. <laughs> so you're telling me that there is like a 0.3% chance that Aaron Rodgers could be the president of the United States. Could be the vice president. Of the United States. Vice president. A vice president. What do you think, no. what do you think about president, it? President, president if Kennedy dies. Oh, yeah. If, 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 you know what? There are There is a history of Kennedy dying. So that's not a surprise. <laughs> a 0.3% chance that Aaron Rodgers will be the president of the United States. Does, that I can sentence, see that now if that happens, so. And all that sentence things. is ridiculous. I can see it now if that happens. I can see it. So, Mr. President, we're voting on a bill to ban this. What do you think about it? Well, let me go into my fortress in solitude for three months and I'll come back with a decision. Give me a flipping break. That guy, I'm sorry. I deny the vaccine. A decision to save his soul. And he is where he is because of this. <laughs> oh, my God. No, 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 no. Jesse Ventura, huh? Why don't you just ask Arnold Schwarzenegger if he's not busy? He can't. Can't. He can't. Yeah. No, he can't. He can't. He's not allowed. He can't. He's not allowed. He's not allowed by the by the by the laws we live on. Dude, he's not allowed to. <laughs> because you know because that, you, they, they, those are still a thing. You know. Because as you know, then he'd he'd be a good neighbor. 
It's not the Simpsons. He can't actually be president. This is not the Simpsons. <laughs> Here, so here's the here's the crazy part. Okay, if he picks Aaron Rodgers, now I I would assume that if it was if it was between the two, Aaron Rodgers would be the more popular choice because more people know him. I really think that would give him an edge just for that. I, I was thinking, isn't that crazy? You know, I was thinking the same thing, and I think on the fan they were talking about this. Somebody said it as a joke. But I'm like, you know what's funny? Um, I think people would more to listen to Aaron Rodgers than any of the actual candidates that are up for election right now. People would listen to him. And why? Oh, my God. And, and somebody threw out there a joke. That like, and I know um, it's not a joke. You're a Jets fan. I'm a Giants fan. Somebody threw out there that um, there's a bunch of New Yorkers who are like, hey, can we vote Aaron Rodgers in so we can get him not play for the Jets? He would have the vote of Andrew. He's going to play football in the box. <laughs> Wow. So it's I mean, a imagine one. It's a weird one. It's a weird imagine one time. that he splits the vote. I mean, think about it. This could basically change the outcome of a decision in certain states. This is one of the weirder election things I've ever seen. This is one of the strangest things I've seen for a very, 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 very long time. Mm. Are they going to ask Pat? Knowing that Trump running again. That's been so much. I, uh, <laughs> I don't get it. It, I'm going to stop at that. So, I don't get it. So, so, we live in a world where Trump is running again, despite everything going on in his life. We have the two oldest candidates in the history of this country running against each other. And randomly, RFK Jr. may have an Aaron Rodgers as his vice president candidate. <laughs> what <laughs> is going on? So, would, they, would, they nomin- would they nominate Pat McAfee to be Secretary of State? You know, a lot of people at ESPN might actually be, in, might be happy about that. Come on, I've heard of <laughs> 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 okay. I guess Samantha Irving to do it, so she could just scream all the uh, the bills and stuff. Right. There you, you go, Samantha Irving. You really hate her so much. <laughs> <laughs> Entering the house, bill number. Yeah. Okay. Oh my lord. <laughs> yeah. I. What a wacky world, isn't it? I had to bring it up here because this is one of the weirdest things in a while. I had to bring it up. There, it broke glass. I'm like, I had to put this on here to talk about here. Wow. All right. That being said. And now, let's get into the crazy world of professional wrestling. So what did I miss? All right, I'm not going to bullshit people. We're not going to go through a month of stuff because this is not worth their time. Uh, and, Dad, and Dad and John did do a whole bunch of stuff on their show a couple weeks ago. So I'm not going to go through every little bit of thing. There are some things we want to get into, some things we did miss, important things we did miss. But so before we get into the main two companies, a couple of miscellaneous stories. First of all, um, for those who missed this one, in the background, Jack Perry. I'm um, joining the pan as a scapegoat. And uh, uh, so now I have a, I have a question. Go ahead. Is he like legit? No longer with AEW? I, like I what's going on? I don't know. I don't have a clue. Nobody seems to know the answer to the question, which is terrifying. I'm not going to bullshit you. I don't know the answer to the question. Nobody else seems to know. <laughs> Nobody seems. To I know. like there, that though. <laughs> there's speculation. It's storyline because of the. Wonderful working relationship with New Japan. So well, what's interesting is that he is the scapegoat Jack Perry now in New Japan. And now he's the line himself with the House of Torture, which pisses me off more than anything else. I'm not going to bullshit you. So it's you. working. I hate the I hate. No, I don't so, even understand how much I hate the House of Torture and how much I hate evil. And I hate that whole faction. I don't even yeah. know how much I hate that faction. I, uh, I read that he and Sonata advanced into the cup that, that that's happening, the cup yeah, tournament. I know, yeah, Jack is currently in the semifinals of the New Japan Cup, which I did not expect. That would have been a surprise. Right. Did not expect that one. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll give you more New Japan Cup later because I'm actually watching the next the next couple matches after we're done with the show. So I'm going to go watch the next couple matches of the first round after the show. Okay. Um, the other story that broke literally. So okay, here's the so um obviously I was in the, I was um had my surgery on on the Tuesday a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Obviously. Because everything was, everything went way longer than we all expected. I didn't get to watch the next on Tuesday night. Did not get to watch it. I was planning it. Because trust me, if the surgery went as planned, I would have been in my house in my in my room before NXT, and I would have been able to at least watch NXT in my hospital bed, just chilling. Would have been able to watch it live as I if everything went as planned. Things did not go as planned, and I didn't get into the room until way after NXT was was on. So I didn't get a chance to watch it live. And I was going to watch it on Wednesday. Um, and then Mandy's like, "Did you hear?" There was two big things that happened in NXT on that show. One with the title change, one with the um Heritage Cup champ, the Heritage Cup um changed hands. <laughs> and it's now with the um, North Quarter Cats crew. And um 
that was the big thing that happened. But then he's like, did you hear who returned? I'm like, no. Who returned? <laughs> like, who the hell could possibly return? We're, we're, we're a few weeks out from Mania. Like, who the hell could possibly return? Who the hell is coming? Sean Spears returned to NXT. What? Like, huh? Who? What the hell? And he it? didn't get it, and he didn't change his name back. He's Sean Spears. He is. No, he's Sean Spears. He's the chairman, Sean Spears. In wow. NXT, which did not expect it. He's not trying to Hill and anymore. Um, but the crowd wow. is getting ten at him. Um, and he and the, the, the last two weeks they were putting these videos up. It's like these weird messages. Every week on Tuesday night. And everyone thought there was some Japanese person coming in. People thought it was Okada. And we'll get to Okada later. I knew- <laughs> Okada in NXT? Yeah, okay. Well, you know what? was in NXT. Nakamura was in NXT. Uh, so weirder things have happened. Yes. Like, weirder things have happened. So what did, what did the surprise? And Asuka was in NXT. Like, weirder things have happened. Um, So they did this whole thing. And I'm like, who the hell is coming in? Like, it, we didn't think anything of it. And Dad threw out maybe it was like Tomatonga because he was just coming out of his contract. Like, Things like that, like uh, reasonable answers, like absolutely reasonable choices. No way in blue hell would I expected Sean Spears. No. Nope. <laughs> NXT. And not only that, he did a feud with Rich Holland. Like, what the fuck is happening? What? Yeah, he did okay. a feud with Rich Holland. Well, this past week, I had a match on, in, in the, in what would be the main event match, because they made the same way I do a Trick Williams, so that's different, obviously. He's not going to top Trick Williams right now. But like, it was, it was Sean Spears versus. Um, the fucking Ridge Holland in a mm-hmm. match where, where where Sean is trying to get the evil out of Ridge. I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? You're like, what is happening here? Like, yeah, it, that is that, that makes something. How in the, in the NXT is currently Tony D'Angelo, a stereotypical Italian character, is the main is the number one contender for the NXT championship. Yet Sean Spears and Ridge Holland is the strangest thing that happened in NXT this week. <laughs> Sean Spears has been doing these vignettes where he's trying to get the rage to come forward from Ridge Holland. So stupid. Because he feels so Ridge dumb. is fearing at that. And he figures if once he gets... Didn't he have enough rage when he broke what's-his-face's neck? They're putting that into the storyline! They're putting the story! They're putting the storyline! According to Sean, he wants that type of Ridge Holland to be out front and center and be the animal that he should be. Yeah, they're bringing the injuries into the story. That and the one again, I forgot who went pretty deadly. He hurt. Like they're bringing those into yep. the storyline. Yep. Like, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> That's questionable. Okay. Thank you all that. Like, I don't understand what we're doing. So, well, that's happening. And one of the things before we get to WWE stuff, um, mm-hmm. I did not know about this until today when I was just skimming through wrestling and things to see if I missed anything because obviously this happened. I was in the hospital, so this was completely mm-hmm. off my radar. Mm-hmm. Apparently. Triple A mega champion, um, El Hijo Del Fertingo. We all know him from various up, various popping up on AEW TV every so often. Yep. Had to have surgery to fix a torn meniscus and some ruptured ligaments in his knee. And he's going to be out anywhere between five and nine months. Ouch. And he's still champ? I, I, there's no word of what's going on with the title. Nobody seems to know. The, the, the funny part is, he only won the title because Omega got hurt and he had dropped the title. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like when they got hurt when he was um AEW champ and he was AEW right. and Triple H champion, they had a vacant right. title. That was what two, three, two or three years ago. Yeah, they're gonna have to probably vacate the title again. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like epic rain because it, of injuries. If you watch all his matches, a lot of it is springing off the ropes and other things like oh, that. Oh, he's amazing! He's absolutely yeah. incredible. So I mean. I don't want to say injury like this is bound to happen, but when you're doing all those aerial moves, there's a likelihood that it's bound to happen. No, he's not going to say it's about to happen, but it's bound to happen. <laughs> it's bound to happen, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm just saying. The way he started that sentence, I thought that you were going to say. <laughs> what? All right. Um, hey, before we went in with it, I kind of heard, and maybe you guys can confirm for it. that Miro and CJ Perry are going to be Splitsville. Yeah, Sal brought that up to me. Um, I also heard of something yesterday that Miro went back to Bulgaria. He went I back saw that too. Like what? Oh, he hasn't. Well, he's not being used, so why not? First, so just play out your contract. Come back to WWE at that point. At that point, just come back. I mean, is he is he listed still in AEW roster, or did he take him off? He's probably still listed on AEW's website. Never gets updated, so I have no idea. Oh, there we go. Website. I, I they rarely ever update it. Like it's so rare. 
Remember, remember when the remember they were they brought back the rankings and then they forgot about them again. So <laughs> <laughs> we have rankings. Exactly, that's my point. Exactly, my point. <laughs> remember, they made that big deal about the rankings and then the rankings haven't been on TV in weeks. Yeah. So. <laughs> actually, I'm, I'm, I actually have it up here. I'm looking at the website right now. By the way, I do love the fact that the I have the Bank of AEW World Tag Team Championships on here. Um, <laughs> that is pretty cool. That guy Viking gets around. God damn him. Oh, it's the here. greatest anyway, of all time. We'll talk about this more when we get to AW, but did you happen to see um the, the Bucks had a big announcement? We'll talk about that in a little while. And Viking put up a tweet saying, Don't dare you take away my titles. <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh so damn hard. I'm not, I'm not oh my God. <laughs> so, um, the, while I'm looking this up, WWE, so when we, when we last left you, when we last left you a month ago, Dun, 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 dun. Um, we were teasing um the Rock Roman Cody Seth match at main eventing night one of WrestleMania. That match is now officially happening. Um, first of all, I gotta say something real fast. They have to stop putting the Rock and Roman segments in the last segment of SmackDown. They have to stop doing this. I understand that they want to main event SmackDown with the biggest deal. I get it. But if you're going to have the Rock not understanding time cues in 2024. You gotta not do this anymore because you, because half the country missed the ending of the segment on fucking Friday. Half the country Oops. missed it. Where Oops. Cody slapped Rock, people missed it because the, the local news cuts off the show at a certain time. Well, you know how you can say I, it. I don't get say it. Basically, have them just come out to the Bloodline music and not do the Rock separate entrance, which is all bullshit, anyways. Well, actually, I'm not gonna bullshit you. I really enjoy the rock entrance right now. I really enjoyed it with the new, with the new lightning and everything. I really like that. I actually think it's pretty cool. I actually really like that a lot. I like it. Like, I like it better than the normal bull thing. I actually like it better. Uh, That's true. More goes to the electric, most electric yeah. man in, in the sports entertainment thing. I really like it better. But um, in all seriousness, I don't understand why they can't do the top of the eight o'clock hour. Boost up the ratings. You can take your time. You don't have to rush through the segment. Like you don't have to rush through it because there's literally a video of one of a bunch of stagehands trying to get rock attention to hurry the fuck up because it's already 8:50, it's already 9:55. The show's got to be off the air in three minutes so they can cut the cut the feed to go to local news. And he's right. rambling, he's rambling. I'm like, what are we doing? The problem is, Rock has a tendency of repeating himself over and over and over and over again. What well, we don't need to know. We just explain like the whole stipulation of the match. For those who missed it, the whole stipulation is if Rock and Roman win the tag match, it's the blood and run rules on night two against Cody and Roman. Yeah. But if um Cody and Seth win, then there's no one outside interference. Great. Awesome. You didn't have to re-explain this twice on Friday. You didn't have to re-explain it. <laughs> Mr. Redundancy. Yeah, like I understand, like you need to set it up. Like you just had a video package explaining it. Well, like, <laughs> well, if you look at it, then he explains the bloodline rules. I'm going, well, didn't you kind of like touch on that last week? You just put a video package. You just put a video package right before the Rock and Roll came out. I mean, basically, you know, it's, 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 it's still. You know, you know it's <laughs> no mystery. Bloodline rules are everyone in the bloodline can interfere, and there's no issue. Very the end. There you go. It's, it's it. not difficult. It's not difficult. Man. Now, so Sal, now that we're here, I know you were being had big issues with this a month ago when we last discussed this. Um, now that we're here, how do you feel now? I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. You're consistent. I don't like it. And um, so Seth is wrestling twice with a bum knee. Seth is wrestling twice, Cody wrestling twice, and Roman wrestling twice. Yep. Boo. As it's happening. Everyone but the rock is wrestling twice. Everyone but the rock. <laughs> you know, you gotta look at this from a bigger viewpoint. Is you've got your top stars wrestling twice, and when they wrestle in their first match, you're hope and pray to God that no one gets hurt because if uh -huh. they do, you know. Oh, I hope somebody does. The I second hope night, Cody Rhodes. I hope he dislocates his fucking spine. Fuck Cody Rhodes. Thank you, Sal. And <laughs> I hope that that main event for night two is ruined. Wow. Jeez. Just, just, just tell us how you really feel. Okay, hit the soundboard. 
Let's see who Sal hates today. Sorry, I, was, I was actually writing a time code down. Sorry about that. Let's see who Sal hates today. I was writing a time code down for a video club. Oh. Here's your, here's your uh... Snapchat. Yeah, thank you. There's our graphic for the show. There's our graphic. Oh, I mean, You're welcome. You're welcome. I got I you. Mean, I got you. Hasn't, hasn't anyone up in the upper echelon thought about this that, you know, there's a potential that something can go wrong on night one and in night well, two is I, gonna I'm, be greatly affected? I'm under the assumption these are four of probably the best. I let's be honest. Correct. They're going to take care of each other. You know what I mean? But there's still that chance I mean, that some step. idiot's going to jump off the top rope I mean, and bust a, a, a leg. Dude, we've seen injuries where people just step the wrong direction and you tear a quad. Like, we've seen it. Like, we've seen weird injuries. Like, it shit yeah, happens yeah. all the time. And, 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 it, and here's the thing with WrestleMania is you all the adrenaline's pumping and you want to have that particular WrestleMania moment. I understand that, but to what extent do you kind of go... Okay, maybe I shouldn't be doing this because there's potential that I'm going to get injured and it's going to affect my match on night two. I, the problem is, we've never had a situation in WWE where we're doing match one, match on night one and night two like this. Like New Japan did this a couple of years ago for the kingdom. But the ultimate thing is, New Japan, they did it, they did it like we're doing a mini tournament. We're going to have two matches on night one and then the winners will face each other on night two for the title. Like they did a big deal, they made a big deal out of it. This is completely different from what New Japan did. Like completely different. My, like, my, my whole thing with this is that I'm splitting it with the two nights. I mean, and I'll be honest, and this is just my my opinion. No one else's is. I think they should have did this particular tag team like on SmackDown to determine what is going to happen for WrestleMania. Maybe, maybe and they've I, done stuff like that in the past, so that that is a good point. Because then the that way, hearing, dog up, barking, hearing dog barking, I apologize. I don't know what's going on behind me right now. I don't. I don't hear it. Okay. But my my whole thing with that is then you can free up that time for other talent to be showcased from WrestleMania. What's interesting to me is you have the opportunity. If you didn't, if you didn't have this whole situation, oh boy, I'd love to know what the fuck what would happen. What would have happened if Punk didn't get hurt? If Punk didn't get hurt, and we had Seth Punk as planned, and they tried to do The Rock and Roman, the crowd turned on the match again, and we ended up with Cody Roman. Exactly the same situation we're right now. Exactly the same thing. Well, then what do you do in that situation? Because Triple threat. But you're not going to do the tag match. You're, Drew wouldn't be in the main event. Like, so many dominoes have fallen weirdly that we did not see coming too much. Yeah. Like two months ago, we went to the Rumble. This doesn't make any sense how we got here. I mean, it doesn't make any sense how we got here. Dad so, is so upset he just quit the show. <laughs> I think he's trying to figure out what's on with all the dogs behind me. The dogs are getting loud for no reason. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> they saw a squirrel. So, or or there's a dog walking through. Or the walk. It's really nice here. I got my window open next to me. It's really nice here today. So, like, yeah, it's like 60 here. It's like in the 60s here too. So, like, it's really nice here. But anyway, well, let's move, move on. I mentioned Drew. Can I just say, and I know we all joke about Christian Cage over on AEW, <laughs> um, but is Drew McIntyre like the best heel in wrestling right now? Like he got to be the best because he turned. He has this way of speaking the truth on his end, but also being the biggest asshole. But also, <laughs> like he makes a valid point. But he's a prick. <laughs> but he, but he's a nice guy. I, I don't know. He's such a conflict, and I love it. He's such a fantastic. <laughs> fucking heel and i don't even i can't even explain what it is like he's amazing at this so what do you think um so i used to say a lot back in the day i always remembered during wrestlemania season that raw and smackdown raw in particular always was must see tv and if you missed an episode during mania season you missed a lot and it hasn't been like that in a while. But Drew is what that used to be. He is must-see TV during Mania season. And I am all for it. Because I'm enjoying it. It makes me giggle. He's kind of like cute in an evil way. Um, and I texted you the other day and I said, I hope the ultimate troll is at Mania 
he comes out to punk's music. <laughs> oh. oh wow! That I'm sorry, but that would be one of the best moments. Because like, he's playing. The best part is that punk, rock, punk's going to be on Raw next um next week, the week after on the twenty. I think the Raw before Mania. He's going to be on Raw. Yeah. They, they better have some kind of a segment with Drew, Drew Punk. They better have a segment. So, have one. <laughs> it, would you say that this is Drew's attempt to determine how his contract goes because it's expiring? Seriously, if they have not signed him yet, they're the problem. They're the problem if they have not signed him yet. Especially during this run. He saved them. He literally saved the, one of their main events. Of, yeah. Of WrestleMania. I mean, he literally saved I mean, Con- consider, uh, I'll, I'll put it. Uh, consider that if he would jump ship to AEW, what a loss that would be for them. One hundred percent. But a big boost for AEW. I, I gotta say, like I said, Drew has saved one of the main events of this for the Punk's injury and Seth being distracted by the Rock. Drew has literally saved one of the main events of WrestleMania just by being an asshole. Like, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> When, when, <laughs> I mean, way back when, when he got released by WWE, and he was making his way back, and he started with uh, TNA when t- TNA Impact, and he made a difference over there, and all of a sudden, boom, he's back on WWE. Uh huh. And he's been- I mean, here and here's the thing: he's a hard worker. He knows what he did wrong. He corrected himself. He basically became more focused, more mature. Uh, and was open to suggestions on how to better his character and other things. And God, you hopefully someone is listening to this and says, Hey, we should lock him into a contract before WrestleMania because after WrestleMania, I guarantee the phones will be ringing off the hook, wanting him in another organization. Literally, right now, he is, he has. Uh, he's, he's helping promote WrestleMania, and he's pretty much booked himself into a SummerSlam main event with Punk. That's pretty much what he's done. <laughs> he's pretty much done that. Like he's done, he's did. Like I don't know how he pulled it up, but he's made he, he's in the currently co-main eventing SummerSlam. <laughs> yes, <dear. laughs> but, but here's the thing: who saw that coming? This is <laughs> this is this is what Drew wants, but it has not been confirmed. You know, like if you do it, if you're doing things smart, you're paying attention. That's pretty much what he just did. So, so Drew's his own booker, is that it? Pretty much. I got it. All right, let's move on to one last thing, WWE wise, and I mainly put this on here. Let's see who Cell hated today. <laughs> I'll put that clip now. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, give a now. thumbs down. I'll put that now. So, they announced on Raw on SmackDown. I got my, my shows mixed up on SmackDown this week by Logan Paul himself. The Prime. Sponsorship will be center ring for WrestleMania and all future PLEs in 2020. <gasps> Even at Mania? That's what it's starting. It's starting at Mania. It's starting at Mania. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> exactly. Hated today. So I know Sal is very, <laughs> very, very old school about this kind of stuff. I know he's anti freaking low logos being on jerseys in the, in the NHL and anti like all this stuff. Um, I'm going to throw out the refrain to Sal. I'm not gonna bullshit you. I, I'm probably going to be the kind of person that forgets there. I'm gonna probably forget it's there. It's dead center, though. I mean, if it was in the corners. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You don't watch New Japan. In New Japan, there's advertising everywhere, and I mean same, everywhere. Same thing with CMLL and AAA and UFC. For another example, for UFC, it's everywhere. So you block it out after a while. Like if you if you start to watch New Japan, you'd probably be pissed off by all the advertising in the ring. You'd probably be pissed because it's everywhere. But after a while, it's kind of there. You don't think about it. You don't really care. It's not what you're watching. Yeah, you know, so, like, it's there for boxing, too. But my thing is, to me, it's like a perfect target. If you want to pin your opponent right in the middle of the ring, cover the damn logo. There you go. One, two, three. Or, or, yeah. or yeah. someone bleeds. There you go. Right in the middle of it. <laughs> But you're very anti-advertising in general when it comes to the kind of stuff. So go ahead, Sal. Go ahead for it. Yes. Um, so, I mean, everyone knows what Prime is that watches WWE at this point. Everyone knows that Prime is associated with Logan Paul. He fucking brings it to the ring with him. You, you can't just leave it at that. Like, you can't have 
his little minion dress up as a prime bottle again, like they did last year and parade around the ring and have your advertising that way or put it on the fucking led wall at spot like like in the middle of a fucking ring like really like come on i don't want to be staring at that off for fucking six hours over a course of two days what if he would put it on his ring attire he did already you could put it on his fucking dick for all i care i don't care Ooh, ah tattoo ouch 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 I was hoping you were going to spit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Is so he drinking those, Prime? So for those listening, I did not. I, I'm drinking. I have just finished my soda next to me. I did not expect that. And I almost spit my soda all over my over my Oh, no, 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 no. We, we so close. It became so close. <laughs> I caught so, myself. I said, no, I have all my equipment in front of me. I caught myself. <laughs> and then, no, no Triple H spray? No. <laughs> Uh, but you know, I somewhat agree with Sal. But if you have a sponsor, oh, that could be another show name too. You could tattoo it on his dick for all I care. <laughs> tattoo dick. There you go. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you got all these sponsors for this, and they have their advertising, and I get it, no problem. But you know, I to me, you put something in the middle of the ring. It's like a bullseye that you either got to cover it or do something over it because it's staring you right in the face and how many camera angles you're going to have where you're shooting this. And it just, wow. I, but I'm sorry. I, Logan Paul. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's successful and I'm happy for that, but there we go. yes, do you yes. have to shove everything he does down my throat. I'm sorry. How does Snickers feel? Snickers has been, uh, uh, a sponsor of WrestleMania for how many years now? Like, like they're like, well, what the fuck? Eight years. I think it's eight, I think it's eight years. I think it's the eight year. You know, yeah, it's you not know, like, right. like Slim Jims and things like that. Established people that you know they have advertising with, and then all of a sudden Logan Paul comes in and bam, you know we're gonna burst the world and advertise Prime. He does that on his own. You don't need this to happen. I mean, right. don't shove this shit down my throat. I, you know, it. It may be great for younger people, and they're all hyped on Logan Paul. But here's the thing, to me, Logan Paul, believes his own hype, and I'm glad he takes the wrestling seriously, so he doesn't get injured. Believe me, yeah. I'm happy for that. But when you figure you can dictate how things run in this organization, and you're the new kid on the block. Think about all the other people that you're going to alienate or have alienated. Come on. I mean, you're, this is supposed to be a nurturing environment, and it's not nurturing when you bring someone like this asshole in. Let me just say something else. Dictate everything. Let me say something. Let me say something. And I understand what you're saying. Okay. In his defense, they're paying him for this. <laughs> like, they're paying him for the sponsorship. They're paying the prime in whatever the company it is for the sponsorship. If you're in his shoes, don't you take the money? Would you take the money and run? Okay, I take the oh, money. Look at that perspective. Like, would you take the money? Okay. You're him. Like, honestly, okay, yeah. I, I, I take the money and, the and basically I take the money and be an act of talent, but I don't have to like bring my products with me to shove down okay, everyone's if, throat. If TKO, if you're if you're writing crime and TKO came up to you and said, "I'm going to give you this check and we're going to promote you on our ring," are you going to say no? Well, here's the thing. You have to ask that, that question, but being serious right now. Yes, I'm okay. going to say no. Absolutely, I would say. Here's the thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. If, if Logan Paul is doing this, what's, <laughs> Fair stopping, what's stopping The Rock from promoting his energy drink? Nothing. The Rock has an energy drink? Oh, yeah, he does. He does. There's a thing that came out recently. I can't Zuma, I guess. Or Zuma. It's happened but, recently. But here's the thing. When is enough enough? When is it stop? I mean, I can I understand... You like putting it on the banners and, and things around the ring, but when does it stop? I mean, when is enough enough? Pretty soon they're going to have advertisements on their fucking tights. I mean, what, what, what's they're what's, they're what's the next thing? They're going to for a while. What's the next thing you're going to promote? Trojans! 
Yes, we're gonna have that in the middle of the ring. Trojan condoms. Yes. What year? Yeah, we don't have accidents. Yeah, that. What year are we in? That. That's a fucking. That's the Attitude Era thing. You're not in the Attitude Era anymore. That would be something that happened in the Attitude Era. That's not something that happened now. Yeah, you, you never know. You never you know. know. The, 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 the joke you missed here. The joke you missed would have been blue chip. That's what, <laughs> that would have been the joke. Bit, but, Bitcoin. No, blue chip. That's the advertising. Yeah. That's the joke you're going for. Oh yeah, yeah, that's everywhere now. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Exactly. So. Can like, we get a sponsorship for Blue Chew? The fucking Blue Chew thing. That started as a, that started as a throwaway advertisement on Conrad Thompson podcast like four or five years ago. <laughs> and now it's everywhere. If Blue Chew is listening, I will gladly read anything you want me to read for a couple of bucks. I've heard those advertisements. They're absolutely fucking hysterical. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, and then after the Prime thing, is that SummerSlam that's going to be coming to Cleveland? Yeah, that's a big deal. That's actually a really cool moment that they're going to be at the Cleveland Brown Stadium. for um, so, Pretty cool. That's cool. How, that's awesome. How much pull did Logan Paul have on this? Why would he have pull on that? Why, this, was, this was something that was, that was in the works six months ago. This was mm. six months ago. It is, it is, Abbott did his promoted on, on his show. This is this is six months ago. This was announced. Like this is not new mm. information. This was yeah. You're, you're printing. They 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 know they had this stuff set up months ago, but they were doing it slowly. They, you're not going to announce like Cleveland, Ohio. We're going to have to announce um fucking Paris. Well, you're not going to do that. You're going to space it out. Like the next ever next, next thing we're going to get announced is WrestleMania. It's going to probably be in Minnesota. So like that's the next big announcement we're going to get. Minnesota. Yeah, something you're gonna be. That's kind of roof, right? <laughs> what? That's kind of roof, right? Yes, it does. It does. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like, they have the roof. Like, it's, it's, the roof. it's only it's only collapsed once. But, no, that was the old stadium. That's not the stadium. That's the old stadium. That was the uh, old. Well, this stadium hasn't collapsed yet. Uh, <laughs> we can always break it in. So, um, all right, let's move on over to AEW stuff. So, last time we left you, um, Dad and John were here to talk about um Sting's retirement match. Mm-hmm. And I, I okay, so I want to make the sound. I don't sound to hear this, but I'll say this. This is hysterical. So, Dad went on this whole tangent at the end of the show two weeks ago, saying you have to you have to extend the pay per view time and let Sting have his whole speech and all that kind of stuff. And then they cut him off. <laughs> and I laughed because I'm like, Dad literally mentioned about this on the podcast on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Darby, Darby was saying that he's going to sort of give him the microphone, and in the background, I guess you, you, Darby's getting it's word that Sting needs to cut it, so he kind of goes up to Sting's there. I'm being told we got to go. That was so funny. But anyway, um, before we even get into that ending, I got to applaud. That was a phenomenal match. Like that whole match was great. The ending of the show was awesome. Like, I thought that, the I'm not even, and you know this, I'm not as big of a Sting fan as you guys are. You guys are, Sal, obviously, the number one fan in the world. And Dad's dad, he's been doing this for literally since the beginning of his career. So I, I'm not as big as you guys are, but I have to give credit where it's due. From the minute, the video package, when he's sitting in the theater, all the way to the end, that was a fantastic display of, like, tribute, a match, Sting at the end of the match against the Bucks by themselves. The glass spot might have been much, but it's still a thing that happened. But like overall, that was an unbelievable presentation. Can I say though, and maybe because I've been covering Clerks 3 for the better part of the last three or four months, mm-hmm. and at the end of Clerks 3, they do the whole Dante sitting in the theater watching his life in the screen. That was mm-hmm. in the back of my brain anyway, and I've always wanted to hear that done in somewhere else. And the fact that they did that for Sting. We got to sit in the theater and watch his light on a screen. I'm like, oh my god, like, that made me so damn happy to see them actually do that. So, um, yeah. Dallas, what do you? Um, it was bittersweet. I did. I enjoyed the hell out of it. It was really fun. Um, they made him shine, like they always do. Um, I, I, I got emotional. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I got a little emotional. Really? Um, Sorry. I I hope. I mean, I obviously want him to enjoy retirement and stuff. He's been doing this for so long, but I hope he pops up every once in a while just to say, "Hey, you know." Not obviously not Russell or anything, but 
I, I would like to see him pop up, you know, every six months or so. Say, hey. I, somebody throw out a theory. Somebody throw out a theory that they never ever said that this is his last like he's he jumped appearance. He said, well, somebody threw out there an idea. Maybe if they really wanted to do this, they make him the authority figure. Yeah. To counteract the Bucks. To counteract the Bucks. Right. That'd mm-hmm. be something cool. He did it in TNA. He did it in TNA for a while. He was a great authority figure in TNA. So mm-hmm. I don't know why you can't do that again. You know, right. cool. Like, the has things. Unless he just doesn't want to do the traveling, which true. I can understand. Very true. Or, yeah, but it's something that threw out there as an idea. Or, or they would keep him on, say, as a trainer. And True. and get and get the younger talent kind of like insight mm-hmm. on on what to expect or, or what the organization would want of you things like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But very true, very very true. I I agree with that. Sal, uh, I got emotional. I'm I, you know wrestling this and, and remembering all the things that he's done throughout his career and the f- first match I took Mandy to see and everything. It just brought back a lot a lot of emotions and watch him as he first broke into the the industry and how he was with uh ultimate warrior when they were the blade runners to what he is now and how he's reinvented himself uh many times over and how successful things were for him and uh the opening when his sons were there dressed as different versions of thing that just it hit it it hit the all the emotions on every level, that poster that they released during Sting Week on uh, on uh, Shop AEW, yeah, bro, yeah, I that was cool. That was really fucking cool. Yeah, I thought that was a it, really yeah. good way was, to display. I didn't mm-hmm. miss it. It was pretty much his entire career on like a panoramic view from the beginning all the way to end. That was, and they yeah. couldn't do it yeah. in one big graphic on Instagram. Like that's how long, how big a graphic it was. Yeah. It is available yeah. on the like, pressing piece. I don't know how much it is, but it is available on pressing piece. I think it was like was forty just, bucks or something. Yeah. Not bad. That's not bad. I, I was just more <laughs> concerned for for Darby with the uh, the glass. Oh god, yeah. Hey, we'll talk and, about that. And now. how and how what he was bleeding fuck? and how he was bleeding out, and you could tell that you know that he needed some sort of medical attention. But why? Why? Why was that approved? <laughs> why the blue hell was that approved? Like I understand Darby I, will do Darby things. Darby yes. will do Darby things. Darby will be Darby. And right. Darby's like, I was wanting to die for Sting's retirement. Blah 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 blah. But why the fuck was that approved? <laughs> I, you know, was it was Tony asleep during that meeting or, or no, what? No, he was not. He was probably like, Darby, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Go make it awesome. Go make it awesome. Go make it the best match in the world. I think, that's, I think because, that's what it came down to. Yeah, because Tony's thing would have been, oh, this is Sting's match, and he wants to go out with a bang, and here, pull out all the stops to make it. He, he he's like Sting. Do you want him to do it? Sure. Okay. Cool. Then it's happening. Sure. <laughs> as, as long as as long as I'm not getting hurt and Darby's taking the bump, yeah, that's great. And well, the, but fuck it. Look the best part about that whole thing. So we have three glass panes. One of them, one of them is the one that Sting smashed with the bat, and the glass went into the crowd. That was number one. <laughs> what the mm-hmm. fuck was that? What the fuck was they thought that was a good idea? I will never know. And then there was the second one that Darby went through, which was actual glass. Oh, I did not understand why they did that. I was the third one that thing went through. Where's my sugar glass? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> oh my god! Look, it was hysterical. Like very, very funny. The fact that the third one was sugar glass. This thing's like I ain't going through real glass. What the fuck wrong with you? <laughs> I'm an old man. Why do you know, I sugar glass? I go through real glass. I can think, you know, Steve thinking all like, well. At least I'm not gonna ha- end up like a Darby is. I'll just go through this. And I won't be cut. I won't be laying down there. I won't have Doc Sampson come out and man just turn, turn, turn to get on me. The man legitimately just turned sixty five. So like, I don't blame him for why he's doing that stuff he wanted. But yeah, I ain't going through real glass. What the fuck? That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> well, he he's he's mentioned that he you know getting up there and basically he was he able just, to he get just longer. He just turned sixty five, so right. Like, it's a big and, deal. And said he was able to wrestle longer because of how he kind of had his body all set and he wasn't taking all these drugs and everything and True. you know. Not wrong. Good, good cardio and and you know, weight training and and just eating proper and being proper and mm-hmm. that's what's got him through and and 
you know, kudos to the man for everything he's done. And I, I like the, the, the family picture afterwards that was in the locker room. It was great. And his little granddaughter, I mean, you can see the smile on his face when he's with his family and how happy he is and he deserves it, you know, mm -hmm. and this match did it. He went on a bang. He went on a high note. He went on as a champion. How many times can people say that, that they went on as champion? I, 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 when I they don't remember the last time. Someone did this. I don't, I don't remember the last time. That's yours. I don't remember. Because usually you're basically passing the torch to the contender. This time it was the Bucks, so it's not yeah. like they needed to pass the torch either. You know what I mean? It was the Bucks, like yeah, yeah. So okay, real quick, a couple things I want to bring up here. First of all, um, for those who missed this one, um, Sammy Guevara is currently suspended. Um, he um apparently so they had a match against him and Jeff Hardy on Rampage. Um, Jeff Hardy apparently got a concussion in the match, and mm -hmm. Sammy apparently kept going in the match despite doctors telling him not to. And um, hit a shooting star press on Jeff Hardy, um, despite the fact he it would uh, so he got suspended for not following in ring protocol concussion protocol. Which I not gonna lie, I cracked up at the sentence in ring concussion protocol in AEW. Not gonna lie, that sentence cracked me up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so supposedly the ref let him know, and he still exactly, yeah, free. exactly. Yeah. So that's the thing that happened. Um, that's a, that something happened. So if you're wondering where Sammy Guevara is, that's where he is. We already talked about Miro. That's the thing that happened. Uh, by the way, Miro is still on the roster page. I just looked it up. I looked it up while we're talking to WWE. He is still on the okay. roster. Following up from earlier. Um, what brings me the big stuff? Um, Will Ospreay um, is now in AEW. He's had two matches. They were most phenomenal. It, I, I don't know. We're feeling he's going to be our AEW champion by all in. Um, oh, he's got him. <laughs> or at, at all in. Like, yeah. I, 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 all in. I think all in. All in yeah. But like, Will Ospreay. This is a different Ole Osprey that I saw in, in Japan. This is a different guy. I'm just going to oh, yes. Not the bruv heel. This is the guy who decided, I'm going to turn up and be a babyface. Which I've never seen before in Will Ospreay before. I've never seen him play baby before. So this is a nice surprise. And I even said it to CJ, I'm like, has he always had this charisma? Has he always had this? Like, I've never seen this before. Like, I've never seen this charisma before. It, it, when like, he, yeah, a lot. When he first started. Kids. Like, wow. <laughs> When he first started in New Japan, he had that he had the charisma. Then they turned him heel. So he's been a heel for so long that like you forget like I, how good he is. Yeah. Like I forget how good of a and he is. He, like holy he, crap! When he wrestled against Kyle Fletcher, he showcased everything, and that was a fantastic match. And yeah, mm -hmm. that was that great. So Sal, your your thoughts on Osprey debut in AEW? Because me and Dad obviously we follow him in Japan. You don't watch Japan, so. Your thoughts on Osprey now in AEW? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, we've seen him a few times before, you know, to making a big deal about his, you know, debut, but it's like he wrestled already a few times, whatever. Um, but yeah, he 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 he's one of those rare wrestlers that will grab my attention and I'm not surfing Facebook and checking things on my phone while there's a wrestling match on my television screen, you know, mm -hmm. he, he captures my attention and he does these incredible things that you don't very you know, you don't see very often. And that, that's hard to say nowadays, you know, with all these, you know, new younger people that are coming in and doing all these crazy things and, um, you know, and he's well established already. So that makes it even better. He's not some newcomer that no one's ever heard of before. And everyone's just like, all right, time to go to the bathroom and, you know, get my get my snacks and you know, while this match is going on, kind of a thing. Um, but he's just he's he's great. I, I'm I'm very happy that he's going to be showcased on AEW television, probably on a weekly basis. Uh I'm sure CJ's extremely happy as well that he gets to see him on TV every week. Oh, yeah. Um and yeah, I mean uh, give this guy that title. I mean uh, he's going to be a great representative of this company. And, you know, with, with other new people that are coming in, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna revitalize the storylines a little bit because I feel like the storylines have gotten a little stale over the past year and a half or so. So injecting this new talent um, and, and weeding a couple of people out, I think is going to be a good thing. I'll throw something out there. 
Uh, I know we're in the middle of everyone saying swerve the swerve to win the belt and all kind of stuff. Do you what, what do, if you're AW, if you're Tony Khan, do you have well I I'll pretty, okay, let's we'll say I'll bring the title no matter what all in. He's gonna win the title all in. We all say that. Hmm. Do you have him beat Joe or do you have him beat Swerve? I think it would be more impressive to beat Joe and really solidify how big of a star he is Mm -hmm. and then have him do the dance break match with Swerve later on. Okay. (laughs) That's that's just throwing it out there as something. I just thought about that as we're sitting here because everyone's pushing Swerve to be the first black um, AEW world champion. I would like to see that. I think he deserved it. Yeah, I agree. And Mm -hmm. I think his baby face turn has been well done. Because it yes. hasn't been like we're not. It's been believable. It's been believable. Yeah. And I was talking to a friend of mine who did not see Revolution because he's like, it's going to be too late. I'm not going to spend money on something. I'm, I'm going to know the spoilers about. So let me know mm-hmm. what's going on. And I said during the triple threat, Hangman's now officially a heel, and swore the the baby face. And he didn't believe me. I'm like I mm-hmm. he just turned. Like it's officially a double turn. By the time that match was over, like yeah. swore the baby face now. Like and I know. Then when he watched Dynamite, I was like, okay, now I see it. Now yeah. I understand what you're saying. Because he's a baby face. Like, it was slow. It was well done. It was well told. And AEW mm-hmm. doesn't do stories like that often. And that was a well done story to get him to be a baby face. And yeah. it changed his character. They didn't ignore his past. They didn't change it. It didn't do anything. Like, yeah. I love the fact that he's like, I didn't win the title because of karma, because of what stuff I did. I'm like, well played. Well done. Like, I didn't expect that line. Yeah. Played. It, it seems like Shane wants to distance himself from the Mughal Embassy. Yes, I've noticed that too, actually. So do and, the, the rest of us. Yeah, right. So I well, mean, they're losers <laughs> anyway. So except, yeah. except for except for um except for Nana, of course. But like no, for, he he has to stay and he has to dance, of course. Other than that, <laughs> other than that, I <laughs> uh, my thing with Osprey though is that when you wrestle Kyle Fletcher and another House of Don Callis member, um. Why and I know maybe seeds are planted that basically he'll pull away from Don Callis. Oh yeah, and eventually be a, a thorn. I thought it would happen on Dynamite this week. I'm not going to. This new... past week obviously was big business. I'm just clarifying. Right. Big when I say Dynamite this past week, we're not talking about big business. We're talking about last Wednesday. Just to clarify. Right. That. Go ahead. So uh-huh. and so I I see Will Osprey being a thorn inside of the new elite, and basically, a, I I don't want to say opposing him. But kind of like giving him jabs, like, you know, I'm Will Osprey. This is what I can do. And I don't have to basically kind of go under your thumb and and do all this. I'm my own person. I'm my own man. And I segue, by the way, to get to the new elite, which I will, I'll bring this up to everybody who missed it. Um, and I did not see this one coming. I honestly did not. Okay. I wanted to say something here. I'm going to say something because we've all been having a little rant today. So apparently, I I am I, not on Twitter nearly as much as I used to. I'm just not a big Twitter person anymore. I jump on every so often, maybe during live shows and mainly during the NFL free agency. But that kind of stuff, I'll jump on or the trade deadline to follow along with it. But I don't go on Twitter all the time, especially the last couple of weeks. And apparently, there was a news leak that Okada was going to be on Dynamite last week. Oh. Okay. And I did not see it. No clue. You didn't see it, Sal, obviously, because you no. would have seen it. Neither would have had a clue. So when Okada's music hit, I literally dropped my phone, stunned. Like, I was <laughs> yeah. stunned to hear him come out on Dynamite. Apparently, this was leaked earlier in the day. And it was all over all the podcast listeners the next day. Like, well, that was kind of revealed early. Like, Not for everybody. Not for people like me who stay on social media most of the day. Like, I don't live on social media. <laughs> like, I don't. I, like, I'm on Instagram, but, like, don't reveal stuff over there. So, like. That was a big surprise to me. <laughs> See Okada a week earlier than everyone thought he was going to be on the show. <laughs> a lot earlier than everyone expected. But when the, the one that so, so those who missed it, Okada came out. Um, so the, the young bucks were out there, and they kicked um Kenny Omega out of the elite because of the because he hadn't been on TV a lot. The guy suffering from diabetes, but he's out currently because of that. By the way, I love Shivani yelling, but he's been out sick. I'm not going to be laughing. <laughs> 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 Shivani doing it out there made me chuckle. <laughs> um, and then they suspended Hangman from the Elite. Translation, Hangman beat up a couple referees in the made a, a, a revolution, and he needed to take time off for personal reasons. He almost missed revolution because of whatever was going on in his personal life. 
he was able to do a revolution, and they took him off TV for obvious reasons, and they suspended him in the storyline. Absolutely fine. That's how you actually got to do that kind of stuff. I'm actually okay with that. Correct. And then, and then, um, Eddie Kingston comes out to confront the Bucks, and they start beating him up. So then, when Okada's music hit, and I literally lost my shit, I did not expect to see this. He comes out, and I'm like, "Holy shit!" He's aligning it to Eddie Kingston. It's going to be Eddie Kingston. Okada, literally in my brain, the, the 20 seconds this is going on in the air. I'm like, "Okay, Okada's going to be lining up with Eddie. It's going to be Eddie. it's going to be a great tag match okay, but, next week." And all but, of a sudden, <laughs> and he hits the fucking oh the fucking rainmaker on Eddie. I'm like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> no, keep in keep in mind that Okada is dressed to the nines. Yeah, he looks amazing. Absolutely fucking incredible. Suit and tie and everything. Somebody hit the hit the brain taker on oh, fucking Eddie. I'm like, what? I literally screamed out, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I, I have a question. Go for it. How, how annoyed is New Japan with AEW for taking some of their big stars lately? That's a good question. That's a very valid question. Especially when I heard the, the contract that Okada has. Like, yeah. Fuck, you know, a lot of money. He's going to gonna me, be a billionaire over there. To me, I think it's giving New Japan a shot in the arm because they're getting noticed for the talent they have coming. Here's the problem. I'm the states. On I'm gonna tell on this. Here's the problem. Go ahead. Um, I, I've been watching in Japan, and right. here's the issue. I can't outside of Naito, and maybe a couple of other people. I don't know who the main event scene is now. I don't know who the main event scene is now because they lost Jay White. They lost Osprey. They lost Okada. Like. They've lost Tamatanga. They they lost Bronson Reed. Like they lost all their main eventers. Except and then obviously Ibushi. Like they don't have a main event scene right now. Well, they lost their main event scene. Like they don't have anybody right now. I mean, well, you see Jay, you're, you're, it's, it's, like, it, it seems like they're pushing Zack Saber Jr., but you can only do that so that's much. It. That's it. I have like, normally in March, I can pretty much tell you, well, this is gonna be the main event of Dominion. This is might be a person who's gonna be in G1. I have zero clue right now because that whole main event scene's gone. Like, everyone's so, gone in South Point. The whole main event scene's gone. So, like, <laughs> do you see Hangman coming to New Japan? No, no. I think we're going to do it. He's going to be, they're making this big faction when Hangman comes back. Okay. And, and Omega's going to have a come in, Drew, and we're going to we're gonna headline a, a pay per view with Omega Okada 5. I guess it's going to happen. Yeah, but I have no problem personally with because yep. this country has never really seen that match. But like, that's what I see happening. And then to, to Sal's point, you're right. I don't understand how New Japan feels right now, like how they're feeling right now because they literally lost their 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 number one guy. They lost their number one guy, and they didn't put well, in in New Japan. By the way, they also mm-hmm. fucked up on this one. They didn't put anybody over. They didn't put anyone over on mm-hmm. during his farewell run. They put no. No, oh. they, they vacated the six man tag title. Like, they didn't do anything. But they did not put anybody over on his way out, which is so, stupid. President Tanahashi has got some work to do in order to get some talent to get noticed. Yeah, it's weird. It's a weird situation over there. And I'm with Sal. I, I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't know what's going on over there right now. I mean, it's weird. If, if, if you would look at it from a business viewpoint, it almost seemed like a, it's a fire sale where these guys are jumping ship because they figure that financially New, New Japan may not be floating much longer. So they figure before it goes down, I'm going to go someplace else and keep, keep making money because New Japan may or may not be financially stable. We don't I, know. I don't know what's going on. Like I said, I don't know. And I, I can see ZSJ. Um, Dr. B. Jr., for those who I keep seeing CSJ that I realize, I don't think anyone knows what that means. Uh, Dr. B. Jr., he's going to be probably main eventing finally. Um, I, I actually want him to be the one that, be, that beats Naito, and I never was a CSJ fan, but now I'm kind of, I saw his match against Brian Danielson, and I'm like, okay, I understand it now. Like, I get it now. Like, I understand why he's in the main event scene, and I can see him being the guy who beats Naito. But at the same time, I'm just like, and? And who's <laughs> next? Who's next? That's the problem. I don't know who's next. Ushi, Evil. I don't. I don't want to see Evil in my main event scene ever again. Okay. I, I really want to see him on my TV ever again. Um, <laughs> I, really want to see him, I really want to see him in the wrestling ring ever again. 
So, <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then once in a while, you've got Lance I'm Archer. Nice. That, I'm being nice. You, uh, you've, got, you've got Lance Archer that pops up there occasionally. Lance Archer pops up everywhere. Lance Archer was supposed to be in the meat match at Brooklyn Revolution. Like, <laughs> he pops up everywhere. So, I mean, yeah. it's going to be interesting what happens with New Japan. But yeah, so I'll, I'll keep a eye on that. Because like I said, I'm going to watch the Japan Cup when we're done with the show. So, like, I don't understand what's going on over there right now. I don't get it. Because, <laughs> because here's the other thing with you've got Okada and Will Ospreay that came in. Okay, now Jay White. Oh, God. Oh, you're, you're, I'm, sorry, you're sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You you missed. You missed. Okay. Yeah, according to wrestling right now, wrestling wrestling social media, he is poor Jay White. Part of yes. he's poor Jay White. That's what he's called right now. Because of poor the, Jay White. Poor Jay White because he's part of the six. The, the um the um the um scissor. The, what the fuck is the name of that group? The Bang Bang Scissor. The Bang Bang the Bang Bang Scissor Gang. Yeah, he's part of that for some reason. I don't understand why Jay White's part of it. I have zero problem with the group. I think the group's fucking hysterical. But why is Jay White a former? Two-time IWGP World Champion. There should be one of your main eventers stuck in this weird 12-man faction. Like, why? So, I don't so understand here's it. The thing. My thing is, I see Osprey challenging Jay White for something, and Jay White stepping up, and then he'll get that notice that he should have gotten. Like, I'm really hoping that him and Darby, they let Jay White be Jay White in this match at a big business. I yeah. really, really hope they let Jay White be Jay White and yes. remind people how damn good Jay White is. How good he is. Because I, I have zero problem with him with the guns. I think him with the guns is going to cap a chemistry. A right. Big chemistry. And you bring Juice Robinson back whenever he gets fueled up. Fine. But I don't understand this mega faction. It makes no sense to me. I don't know why they're holding a trio championship. The um, six man tackling championship are going to have honor that nobody cares about. But I don't understand any of it. Like, I, I, I it makes don't, no sense to no. me. There is a good possibility because of all this that Jay White may decide to kind of like pull out and basically focus on a singles match. Which would be good. Which would be very good for him. Right. And I think that's probably what may happen because of how everything seems so morphed. And to me, it, it seems like this whole Bang Bang Scissor Gang thing is forced. It's not natural. I agree. I agree. I mm -hmm. agree with that. Um, so Speaking more, of forced. Well, yeah. One more da, 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 da. Before I even get to that, I want to say one thing. Okay. I, I, got, <laughs> I forgot to put this note from the Bucks and Okada. What's interesting for me of them being together. I, I meant to put this up like 20 minutes ago, but we went off on different tangents. Oh, <laughs> we went off on different tangents. Um, the interesting part is that people don't know this. Okada and, and the Bucks have never been aligned before. They've never been aligned. Yeah, okay. no. Okada's been in, I mean, I'm going to explain this because they're going to go off on hand if I don't get this out of my system. No, go ahead. They were the part of Chaos, the top face faction in New Japan. The Bucks mm -hmm. were in the Bullet Club and then part of the Elite. So no, they never, never aligned before. And Okada never had not been a heel since he first joined New Japan. So this is all a big deal and this is happening the way they happened. Apparently Okada wanted, no matter what company he went to, wanted to be a heel. No matter which company he went to. Okay. So he's getting to do what he wants to do. Good for him. We'll see what happens. I hope to God that they're in but a big crowds than on Collision this past week, where he had his first match and they got to have a showcase match for Okada and a six man tag where the Bucks did nothing, which by the way helps a little hilarious. Mm -hmm. The Bucks did nothing in the six man tag. Okada got to beat up three guys. And um there was <laughs> other, there was two thousand people in an eighteen thousand feet building. So I <laughs> thought I just want to throw that out there. That, that's weird. Speaking of which, segue to big business. Obviously, when this show, when people hear this, it'll be after Big Business already aired. Mm -hmm. um, and officially, I'll say it now. Fuck it. Mercedes Monet, part of AEW. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, why not, right? <laughs> Mercedes Monet, part of AEW. <laughs> There's a lot of mixed feelings on how this is going to go. Did you see how awful her hair was, though? Which time? <laughs> Which time? Her hair has been terrible. Since At this debut, that... that... Technically didn't happen yet, but will happen because this is going to air two days later. Yeah. <laughs> Her new Japan hair wasn't that great. So wouldn't surprise me. Um, <laughs> what color do we want it to be? Oh, Jesus Christ. But I will say, though, I don't I, 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 I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if this is going to really work. Because Mercedes okay. is not going to put up with the way that women's division in New Japan is pushed. But they're not pushed well. Especially on Dynamite. 
Like, I still don't understand how the Dynamite Before Revolution, there wasn't a fucking go-home segment for Tony Storm and Gianna Perazzo. I still have no well, idea why that happened, how that happened. Was, I was so close. In, in Tony's mind, was this supposed to be to fill the void when Jade left? I don't know. I wish I could tell you. This is a weird one. I, I Here's the thing. I don't see her being very dominant as far as the women's division. I really don't. And here's the problem. Say they don't, they say they do something big for her at the beginning. And you know how TK is with everybody. He has right. toys and then right. the toys like, oh, fuck it. I'm going to get rid of this toy and I'm going to stay with this new toy. Watch this happens. You know. And we always joke about it on the show about, we've joked about it for, for months. Right. Like NFL and Taylor Swift. For right. Swift Monet fans are just as bad. They're just as crazy. They're just as nuts. They will not put up with her not being pushed in some way, shape, or form. It doesn't have to be a main eventer. Just be on television. Like, I'm not even saying push her to the main event. Like, I'm all right if you have her feud with, like, Britt Baker. Or even, I, I, I and again, this hasn't aired yet, but I have a feeling she's going to be debuting feuding with Willow. Which is great, because they continued their feud, but they never got the finish. They had a feud going on in Japan, they never got the yep. finish, the Mercedes got hurt. That's fine. Yep. Do that on television, yep. it's a great idea. But then what happens when TK gets bored? And he wants to push somebody else. And then Mercedes mm -hmm. fans on it, on social media go fucking crazy. <laughs> what happens then? So, oh, you've, been about the, you, Sal, you've been joking about the Cody crybabies, but the Rock named them that. Mercedes fans are worse, and we all know this. Okay, so yeah. my thing is, if you want to push her to get a belt, do you have her start a feud with Julia Hart to get the TBS championship? That wouldn't be the worst idea. That would not be the worst idea, even though I think she's currently... Who is she in the future right now? Is it, is it Willow? Uh, Willow it, 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 it's it's Willow right? and, and Chris and... Sky Blue? Is that currently what's going on over there? No, she's aligned with Sky Blue now. Yeah, like, is that weird, yeah. like, four person thing going on over there but like it's yeah. weird like i don't know what the hell is going on i, mean, I think julia got hurt i think and she got hurt but it wasn't enough to take the belt off her i think that's what would happen here right and they had so, a way to keep her on television so they did i don't blame them for doing it here's, do that, that's here's, fine. Uh, here's no? another question to pose do you see her building her own woman's faction maybe maybe it wouldn't be a worst idea maybe uh, I, I I just I think she's gonna get lost in the shuffle and and because there's so much talent in the women's division I she's gonna get lost in the shuffle I don't see her standing out I really don't I mean in, in, unless unless Tony has a women's tag team championship belts that are uh, no more belts. oh God no no more belts. No more no more belts. belts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's like for some reason when something doesn't go right, here's Tony comes up with a different type of belt. So, you know, I, yeah, I, I just don't see her kind of like being the bright star that everyone thinks that she's going to be. So, all right. Well, that's where we're going to end things. But quick, quick, um, something just broke. Like a major news story just broke. Go ahead. Um, this is a this is back to a little bit of political stuff, but not like what we're talking about earlier. Apparently, the House of Representatives just passed a bill that could it's going to ban TikTok in the U.S. or yep. force them to sell. This just broke as we're doing the show. This I love how this Congress was priority. Doing. This was priority, but getting rid of daylight savings was not. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Well, but this just but, broke. I, I don't know what anything else is literally just broke as we're doing the show. Like, I literally got to pick three alerts. But, but the whole other Fuck underlining Congress. thing. The, the whole underlying thing with the TikTok thing is because of the Japanese government, how they're going to... Chinese, Chinese, blah, Chinese, blah, blah, blah. Chinese, Chinese, it's a Japanese. Chinese. I'm sorry. Chinese. I'm sorry. My apologies. <laughs> my apologies to the Japanese community. My apology. So apparently, Chinese. so what am I reading here? Apparently, then we'll go off after this. We'll go off after this. Apparently, what this says is... Um, so I'm going to read exactly what it says. This is from Spectrum News. This is what happened to the article that I opened. Um, yeah. The bill would ban TikTok, which boosts 170 million users in the U.S. from U.S. app stores, unless Chinese company ByteDance devices itself from the company within six months. So they have to sell the company in this country within six months that will be banned in this country. Wow. 
but and yet we still have daylight savings time. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the government can't do a damn thing this year. But they, yeah, we have literally the most unproductive government ever in the history of this country. Yet they 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 they're banning TikTok. Go here's the thing. Go, go, you, if here's the thing, TikTok is is more important than basically lowering the interest rates. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so that just broke. Sorry, I, I told just, you, what, really welcome, welcome to the my, wacky world. It just crossed like a whole bunch of alerts, literally, as I'm sitting here, like, wait, what the fuck's going on? So that just broke. So I just wanted to bring that up as we're going off at the air. Oh, what a wacky government we've got. So we'll get, we'll get out of here on that wonderful note. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, that just, that, that just completely threw me off. So I had to just bring that up as we're talking about it. So we're going to end mm-hmm. here. Sal, what do we, Sal, why don't you get us out of here? Are we um, Come on. What are we closing with? <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, uh, not? I texted sure. out this morning. I texted out this morning. Like, I forgot to ask you for your outro. He's like, give me a beer seed dog. I'm like, sure. Why the fuck not? I don't give me care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care at this point. <laughs> You're behind. Probably, probably not going to be involved in WrestleMania in any capacity. Um, but for more information <laughs> on our show, including where you can find us on social media and TikTok before it gets banned, apparently. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. walk- Watch show on YouTube or watch show on YouTube. Uh, go to our website, theplaygetalshow.com, and please, 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 please don't forget comment or leave a rating and review, and we will read it on the show. They went all that hard work I did to launch our TikTok page. They did the credit. They went all that hard work I did. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, did you know Indu Sheer is in the um, qualifying match for the ladder match? I rest of oh. There's a lot. Of- oh, that just got it out. Done wrong. Does that mean you have to have reinforced ladders? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, 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 they're not going to win. They're not going to dance, but it's a, but they're the qualifying match. Anyway, um, that's your thing. Go. Hey, as always, it's been your pleasure. And please, if you happen to have a local wrestling independent organization where you live, go patronize these people. These are young women that are coming up in the world of professional wrestling sports entertainment, and they want to show you what they can do as far as their character, their gimmick, their finishing moves, their promos, everything, the whole package to get to that brass ring and to get hired by a major wrestling organization. And Uh-oh. you will... Mark is going off on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> so, Cody please... <laughs> please, <laughs> patronize these people. You'll be amazed at what they can do and how they entertain you. And if you go to any wrestling shows, please be gracious you know, be nice. Don't no. be rude. It's one world. Thanks. We got, all got to live together. Don't act like an asshole. Please. <laughs> what can I say? But hey, it's one world. Let's love each other as best we can. <clears throat> Kumbaya. Kumbaya. <laughs> or Goose Fraba? Papa Goose. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Large fries, chocolate shake. Large fries with that, y'all. Large fries. Thank you. God did not miss the soundboard, by the way. We did not miss the soundboard. Um, next week we'll be back to continue our road on the WrestleMania and see how big business and and Mercedes Monet debut went. We we're assuming everything went well. We'll find out next week when we come back. Um, stay tuned. That being said, again, thank you so much for all the love, and we'll be back next week. I'm Blake. I'm Sal. I'm Mark. And you're listening to the Blake and Sal Show with Mark. Have a good day, everybody. Yes, have a fantastic day. Don't forget to do your meditation. See ya. Thank you so very much. Goodbye. And good night. Bye-bye, bitch. Ha, <laughs> ha,